Well, Mr. McWitty, shall we give you a fashionable haircut today? Jenny cheerfully asked her clients, looking in the mirror. She didn't mind that the elderly man used to come to their hair salon just to chat. He didn't really need a haircut. Jenny was his only friend, and he dropped by the salon to exchange a couple of phrases with her. The young woman was always friendly and never refused to elderly man a cup of tea. Jenny could keep up any conversation and was also very attractive. Mr. Wickwitty, you really like our Jenny, joked the other hairdressers. Maybe you should propose to her, because she's been a bride too long. I would if I were 40 years younger. Jenny is a good girl, but it is too late for me to think about marriage now, joked the elderly man. But I want to introduce Jenny to my nephew. She is shy, but he is a perfect guy, I swear. Why can't he find a wife for himself? The other woman sees them. Maybe he is ugly or disabled. No, he is healthy. Robert is a good guy and not crooked at all. He's got enough health for three people. He works as a firefighter. He's brave in everything except when it comes to women. As soon as he sees a girl, he loses his tongue and can't say two words. But you like it when men approach you with beautiful speeches, don't you? That is right, Mr. McWitty. Jenny smiled. We girls become stupid like that when some ladies' men pours honey in our ears. Maybe your Robert is a good guy, but forgive me. I don't want to meet him. I am not ready to find my own destiny by such means. I want to find my prince by myself and fall in love at first sight. And maybe I will regret it later. But I really want to have at least one passionate romance in my life. With flowers, courtship, restaurants, tender words, many, many beautiful words. So that I can remember it in old age, even if it turns out to be a lie. You're a fool, woman. The elderly woman coughed. You go after some talkative loafer who doesn't even answer you properly. And the good, serious guys are left out. Mr. McWitty, grunting, got up from the chair, looked at his reflection which had become younger after the haircut, and turned to Jenny. You have golden hands, daughter. Thank you. Well, if you don't want to meet my relative, that is your right. But I wouldn't mind having such a relative. But anyway, I will go now, said Mr. Miquity and left the hair salon. Well, I have to go. Jenny hurried. I have an important meeting today. Don't be mad, girls, but I'm leaving a little earlier and passing all my work on to you. When Jenny disappeared behind the door, the remaining woman in the salon immediately began to discuss her. Why does everyone go to Jenny? What does she have that we don't? This old man, for example, he came the day before yesterday, so that his beloved Jenny wasn't there and left. Literally every other client is hers, complains Heather, a tall, angular woman in her forties. That is true, how can we get Jenny out of the salon? Our profits would double. Angela nodded. I have been working at the salon for five years. Since Jenny arrived, half of my clients flocked to her. She cuts hair better, you know. No way. She cuts hair normally. She's just young and pretty. The men just switch over to her, Angela. Maybe you should be more gentle with them. Maybe then they wouldn't switch over as much, giggled Heather. Besides, you seem more like a hairdresser from a poor neighborhood. You smoke too much, and you always mutter something under your breath. Listen, I wouldn't even sit in your chair. Oh, come on, Heather. Did you graduate from the college for noble girls or something? While the two envious women talked about Jenny, the girl was hurrying to her dates. She had recently met a man who unexpectedly caught her eye from the very first moment they met. Stefan made an impression as a serious and responsible person, but he wasn't a bore. He knew how to court a woman and show her Jenny with compliments. She liked that he was passionate about his work, but always made time for her. Handsome, well-groomed, 
in a nice car with a good job and income. That's precisely how Jenny imagined the man of her dreams. They had only been seeing each other for a few weeks, but the girl was already ready to follow her prince to the ends of the earth. Mr. McQuitty is so funny. Jenny thought about her conversation with the elderly man. He is always trying to set me up with his nephew, but really, how could he know that I am not really listening to him? All I can think about is Stefan. I wonder where we will go today, to a restaurant, or will he invite me to his house? The romance between Stefan and Jenny developed quickly. It seemed like they were head over heels in love with each other and couldn't live without their other half. Stefan showered Jenny with gifts, luxurious buckets, and eventually gave her the covet box with the engagement ring adorned with a beautiful diamond. Oh, girls, boosted Jenny to her co-workers at the hair salon the next day. It seems like I'm getting married. My Stefan proposed to me. The naive girl couldn't understand that her joy and happiness annoyed her jealous colleges. Excitedly chattering, she told them about the upcoming wedding and, as proof, showed everyone the ring with the precious stone. Well, why is the fool so lucky? Heather and Angela whispered maliciously. Now she's even grabbed herself a rich man. She must be a witch, no doubts. Well, maybe now she will leave the salon and we will get her clients. That is right, and this rich guy will soon leave her. All these rich guys are the same. They use young buddies and find themselves a new beauty. But Jenny didn't have time for gossip. She didn't listen to anyone and she literally flew elated with her happiness. Finally, a bright streak had come into her life after everything had gone wrong for so long that she had even stopped waiting for someone to turn on the lights at the end of this endless dark tunnel. She always lived a very simple and even poor life. Her father left the family when she was only three years old, and her mother raised her alone. They lived in tiny apartments in destinedly populated high-rise buildings. When Jenny turned 16, she finished hairdressing courses and started working. All the money she earned in the first few months went towards renting an apartment in a better neighborhood, although this housing was not very much different from their old apartments. For all 16 years of her life, Jenny understood for the first time what it was like to live in a not-so-crowded building. Nobody hovered over her. And they didn't have arguments in the middle of the night right behind the wall. Jenny thought that now everything would work out for her and her mother. But it was not to be. Jenny's mother became ill. At first, they didn't pay any attention to her frequent indispositions. But after six months, doctors diagnosed her with a terrible disease, cancer, and everything went downhill again. Now Jenny worked like crazy, trying to earn something for her mother's treatments, but all to no avail. Her mother died a year later, leaving the girl completely alone. Her blood work saved Jenny from loneliness. Jenny loved cutting people's hair. She did it with love and great enthusiasm. People felt it and always went to her with pleasure. At work, Jenny was distracted and forgot about her troubles, at least for a while. No one among outsiders could suspect that the smiling, friendly girl was sorrowful and unhappy inside, until she met Stefan. Jenny's relationships with men somehow didn't work out. She constantly met either lazy bones who did not know or did not want to provide for themselves, preferring to hang on to their parents, or guys who wanted to dominate and subjugate the freedom-loving Jenny. One of the less suitors even admitted that he had beaten his partners more than once if they couldn't please him in something. Jenny didn't wait for her turn and stopped all relations with him. But when she was almost totally disappointed in men, Stefan appeared on the horizon. The man of her dreams, a knight on a white horse, or rather a white Mercedes. And now he had proposed to her. 
Happy Jenny said goodbye to her tiny apartment and moved in with her fiancé. She got to know Stefan's parents and even found a common language with his mother. Jenny, you know I am a doctor. I think it would be a good idea for both of you to undergo a medical examination before the wedding. You are a future family, and I think there are children in your plans. So, to consciously approach the issue of having children, you need to be examined immediately to know all the pitfalls in case anything happens. Jenny was a little scared by the pressure from her future mother-in-law, but Stefan just laughed. Jenny, my mom has her own queers, like any other person. This is one of the most harmless. I will tell you, it is not a bad idea to undergo an examination, to be honest. And my mom will help us with this. She has plenty of acquaintances at the clinic. They will arrange something for us at the highest level. Jenny didn't want to argue with her future in-laws, especially since she understood that her mother-in-law was right in some way. Well, kids, you are perfectly healthy. And as a mother and a doctor, I can give you my blessing, said her mother-in-law with a smile. After a while, Jenny tried to smile back at her, even though she didn't trust the cunning woman very much. The wedding was only a week away and the bride's thoughts were occupied with preparing for the upcoming celebration. Later that evening, Stefan was taking a shower after a long, stressful day at work, while Jenny lay in bed, scrolling through social media pages. Suddenly, Stefan's phone vibrated. Jenny accidentally glanced at the screen and saw the number and photo of a girl. Something sharp and cold pierced her heart. After hesitating for a split second, she took Stefan's phone in her hands and opened the message. My love, I miss you. I love your touch. I want to snuggle up to your hot body. The letters blurred before her eyes. Her hands began to tremble treacherously, and Jenny dropped the phone on the blanket. Her brain refused to understand the words she had just read. Jenny picked up the phone again and quickly looked through all the messages that had come Stefan's phone. Who is she? Why is she writing such reeling things to my Stefan? Clearly, he has something with her, or at least had. Jenny couldn't gather her thoughts. Everything she saw only spoke of one thing. Her fiancé was cheating on her with this stranger. Oh, darling, it is heaven to take a shower after a hard day. Jenny heard behind her. She turned to the smiling fiancé who had just come out of the shower and tears flowed from her eyes against her will. What happens? Stefan froze in the doorway from surprise. Then he noticed his phone in Jenny's hands and fell silent abruptly. What is this? The girl asked quietly. Who is this woman? Why are you writing such reeling things to each other? Why does she have a photo in your phone? Are you sleeping with her? She expected Stefan to come up with a hundred excuses and try to calm her down as quickly as possible. But the guy was silent, and the silence made everything even scarier. Jenny jumped out of the bed, threw the phone in Stefan's face, grabbed the first thing she could find and ran out of the room. She couldn't bear the betrayal. Not Stefan, not him. There had been a lot of pain in her life, but she didn't expect it from him. It seemed to her that he loved her boundlessly, unconditionally, and that he would never betray her. And now, her faith in him was trampled. Mary, can I stay with you for the night? She called her friends. What happens? Why aren't you at home? Mary asked, frightened. Jenny told her everything, and the enterprising friend decided that Jenny should not cry and grieve now, but urgently heal her sorrow at the nearest bar. She made up Jenny's crying face, dressed her up, and dragged her to cheer up with alcoholic cocktails. Never let that goat get you down. That is all they want, to bring us to tears. Take my Herrick, for example. From the outside, everyone thinks he is such a quiet guy. But you know how many times he is driving me crazy. If it weren't for the wine, I would probably have gone crazy with him by now. Jenny followed her friends into the bar, 
not in alone but not understanding how a couple of cocktails would help her. But a few hours later, she was joyfully singing karaoke with Mary, stumbling and giggling loudly in response to the jokes of the tipsy man who immediately started to join them. Some of them were extremely persistent, and Mary even started arguing with one of them. I smeared all my makeup because of this drunk idiot, Mary said to Jenny. I am going to the restroom to fix myself up. Are you with me? Mary was looking at Jenny, questioning, but the girl was completely drunk and just shook her head negatively. As soon as Mary left, a drunk guy approached Jenny and started hitting on her quite rudely. Dude, leave the girl alone. Can't you see she is not up to it? said a tall, broad-shouldered man who looked about five years older than Jenny. He suddenly appeared next to the rude man. Miss, can I escort you home? I think you've had enough fun. A little more alcohol and you will feel even worse. The stranger carefully lifted Jenny and led her outside for some fresh air. Let me call you a taxi. You just tell me the address before you fall asleep. The man offered. Jenny opened her mouth to give Mary's address, but when she looked at the stranger, she changed her mind. She didn't want to let him go. The man was like a magnet for her. His broad shoulders and strong arms held her so securely, and his voice was so calming that Jenny decided to stay with him tonight. Take me to your place, please. I have nowhere to go tonight. She gathered the courage to say. She wanted to hug him and forget even for a moment about the humiliation she had to endure today. I will get even with Stefan. I will pay him back in the same coin, thought her foggy brain. Jenny put her hands around the man's neck and kissed his lips. For a split second, she felt some resistance, but then the man seemed to give in and responded with hot kiss. The next morning, Jenny woke up in a stranger's apartment. Yesterday's stranger was sleeping next to her. What have I done? She thought in horror and began to gather her things as quickly as possible and need to run away before he wakes up. The man was sleeping soundly, and if she were completely honest with herself, she really liked him. She felt so good with him last night, like never before. If they had met under different circumstances, they might have had a beautiful romance, but now, what was he going to think of her? A frivolous girl who spends her evenings in bars and her nights with the first stranger she meets. Jenny was burning with shame. The only thing that calmed her down was the fact that she and the man were not acquainted, so nobody would find out about that night. However, she would have to explain herself to Mary. She purposely didn't take her phone to the bar so as not to hear the phone calls from Stefan and not to listen to his fake story. It wasn't easy to speak with Mary. Poor girl was very anxious when she didn't find Jenny in the bar. After questioning those present, she found out that Jenny had left with a man in a taxi. She was about to report her friends missing to the police when Jenny appeared at the doorstep. There were indeed about a dozen calls from Stefan and several SMS on Jenny's phone. In them, he assured her that Megan was his ex-girlfriend, that she knew he had a fiancé but continued to text him. He couldn't dare to offend her and block her number, but now he finally did it. Jenny was desperate. Stefan was not guilty of anything, but she had behaved so stupidly right before the wedding. After a couple of weeks during the honeymoon, Jenny felt slight dizziness and nausea. Test confirmed that she was pregnant. Could it be the result of that one night? But no, it can't be. After all, she was with Stefan more often and the likelihood that it was the his child is immeasurably more significant. Jenny tried to calm herself down and forget about that night like a dream that should dissipate upon awakening, leaving a light haze of regret for something that did not come true, but she never imagined to forget that night. On time, she gave birth to the boys and heard from the doctor what she had been afraid of all that time. The miracle did not happen. Her twins turned out to have the B-blow type. 
while she and her husband had all. Under no circumstances could Stefan be their biological father. There was no point in hiding the truth, especially since Jenny's mother-in-law was a doctor, and sooner or later, everything would have been revealed. Jenny understood that it would be incredibly difficult for her to handle two children at once. She decided to tell the whole truth right away. This woman kept throwing tantrums at me about Megan. Stefan was indignant without even thinking that I would take you with your brats. Go back to their father. Jenny was picked up from the maternity hospital by her friends. Four months had passed. Two of the hardest months in Jenny's life. The babies got a little stronger in that time. And she made a difficult decision for herself. After placing them in a daycare, she returned to work, bringing joy to her clients and disappointments to her colleges. One of the first people to greet her was Mr. McWitty. Shani, how I missed you. How are your kids? How are you, my dear? I'm certainly happy to see you. But why did you go back to work so early? Mr. McWitty was surprised. Well, there's not much to tell, Mr. McWitty. Good things are scarce. I split up with my husband. What? How, how could this happen? What a scandal he turned out to be. No, no, he is not to blame for anything. It just happens. In general, this story is not interesting to anyone for long. But thank God my little ones are alive and healthy. Well, that's the most important thing, Jenny. That the children are healthy and growing up without getting sick. It is hard for you, I understand. It is good they enrolled them in daycare. Yes, of course, it would have been better later, but there is no other way. I am alone. Well, that's fixable. You will find a good person, believe me. And you are not alone. You have so many grateful clients. You are like family to us. Here's what I propose. I will organize a fan club for Jenny, the hairdresser, and her sons. Am I a movie star to you, Mr. McWitty? Jenny laughed, probably for the first time in many, many days. For some reason, these words of the old man made her feel lighthearted. How is a mother of twins not a star? She will shine brighter than any star. That is it. We have decided. We won't leave you alone. When is your day off? Give me your address. My nephew and I will come to visit, pick you up with the little ones, and we will go on vacation. Come visit us this Sunday. Roberts, my nephew, will make a barbecue. We will eat, chat, and maybe even go to the countryside. Do you know what kind of car Robert has? A Jeep. Your whole big family will fit in it. Mr. McWitty, are you at it again? Are you deciding everything for your Robert? Does the young man really need to spend his day off entertaining us? I'm not trying to match you up with him. I'm just inviting you over. I'm a great cook myself. All right, we will be there for you at 10 on Sunday. The verdict is final, no appeal. If only I could shed 40 years, said Mr. Mikuri and ran off to his business. The entire hairdresser burst out laughing. What an old man. Look, Jenny, if his nephew takes after him, don't let him go. But where am I supposed to go now with my kids? Jenny waved her hands. However, Jenny put on her best dress on Sunday morning and dressed her little ones in a cute outfit. Just in time, the doorbell rang. Jenny hurried to open the door and almost fainted. Next to Mr. Mikuri was the man from her dreams. The man with whom she had spent that magical, sweet night that gave her sons. Is it you, Jenny? Robert said this short phrase at the same time. I don't understand anything. So you know each other? Mr. Mikuti was surprised. Well, it turns out that we have already met, muttered Robert. Jenny began to tremble with a small, nervous shake. It was impossible to believe, but the father of her children was the nephew that Mr. Mikuti had long dreamed of introducing to Jenny. And it was happiness for everyone. 
Now her boys would not grow up without a father, and their young mother would not bite her tear-stained pillow at night after all this. Who can deny destiny? Thank you for joining us today on Deep Stories. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video.